Hey Guilos, welcome back to the most subscribed channel on YouTube. Please don't check, I'll start crying. So recently, I feel like YouTube sponsorships have been shifting away from being a mostly harmless way for creators to make money through brand deals into a mess of scams and questionable advertisements. It went from stuff like Loot Crate and Dollar Shave Club to entire banking institutions. To preface, I understand that YouTubers need to make money to continue doing their jobs, so I don't really blame them for taking these brand deals, especially since AdSense just isn't enough anymore. However, I do feel like they have a responsibility to research a product they're about to advertise before they push it to their impressionable audience. With the amount of influence these people have, they should be a lot more careful with what they're advertising. For instance, let's talk about balls. Manscaped is a company that sells male grooming products aimed at the below the waist region, famous for their tagline, Your balls will thank you. It was founded in 2017 after the CEO saw a gap in the space of male hygiene for male grooming needs. Electric razors aren't anything new, but Manscaped grew to popularity due to their extremely blunt and humorous marketing and sponsorships by influencers. By acting like this was something new, they were able to capture the attention of a ton of people. The trimmers that they advertise are pretty expensive, ranging around $100 and then eventually dropping when the next iteration releases. For reference, this is how expensive the newest lawnmower is compared to the Philips Norelco, which is an electric razor brand that's been around since the 1940s. The Manscaped product is over double the price of the one that's regularly available in stores. But hey, at least the Manscaped one has a spotlight LED, and we all know that we shave the most delicate part of our bodies in the dark, right? On top of being extremely overpriced, they're also not safe for you to use on your balls. Please do not use these on your balls or any other private area. The marketing would have you believe that it's completely safe for you to shave your sensitive areas with this razor, on account of them saying that it's completely safe for you to shave your sensitive areas with their razor. It's actually pretty dangerous to use any electric razor in that area, considering the fact that there's a lot of loose skin that can get caught in the little spike shapes they have. Also, not waterproof. Nobody these balls would thank them for that. The last thing I want to talk about is the fact that they've somehow flipped the pink tax by making their gendered product with a manly coat of paint and then charging double what their competitors do. They also enroll you into a subscription service without your knowledge or consent and they make it as difficult as possible to unsubscribe. Awesome. Just don't buy Manscaped at all. Their products already exist elsewhere with much better quality, affordability, and accessibility. Anyways, you don't need an electric razor to shave your bits. You can use a normal one. And also, you don't have to shave them at all if you don't want to. Manscaped ads are trying to make you feel insecure or dirty about your body hair, but honestly, don't worry about it. It's not that big of a deal. You know what is a big deal though? Drinking water. Air up, segue. Oh man, I just hate water so much. It's so gross and yucky. It's so bad. Oh goodness, if there was only some way that I could drink water without it being so bad. Bam. What if water was smelly? AirUp is more obviously a pretty silly product, but I wanted to touch on it because of how it sort of highlights how these companies that constantly sponsor influencers operate. The plastic bottle itself is $40, and then you have to constantly buy new scent pods, which come in packs of three for $8 to $13, and then on top of that, it doesn't even work the way that people advertise it. From all of the reviews I've read, it seems like the scent pods are actually pretty potent, but they don't change the flavor of the water as much as as people would like them to. They're kind of just lying about what it does. Unfortunately, you can smell cotton candy all you want while you eat it, but broccoli's always gonna taste like broccoli. Also, the water bottle leaks and it doesn't really work if there's not a scent pot attached, because of course it does. If you actually do like it, cool, I'm happy for you. But should you want more flavors or refills of the ones you want? you're gonna have to constantly pay that $8 to $13 again and again and again. The scents get dull over time exponentially because that's just how scents work. It's like an air freshener. To produce the scent, it's emitting particles that smell like the thing it's supposed to, and eventually it'll run out and dull. As it does, it'll smell less and less like the thing it's supposed to. 
So clearly, after spending about $4 on research and development to make a water bottle that leaks, the company decided to spend the rest of the budget on marketing, which actually seems to have worked. This is a strategy that a lot of these companies like to take. They create a product that works just enough to keep them out of legal trouble, and then they spend the rest of the budget advertising to young people who may not know any better and just trust the creator that they really like. These products aren't necessarily harmful or dangerous and YouTubers gotta get the bag, I get it. However, there are products that are ha- I'm gonna scream, okay? I'm gonna start screaming really loud. But what about products that are harmful and they just ignore it in order to make some more cash? So we've reached the point of advertising and selling flavored air. Okay, this is fume. It's a product that's cropped up in sponsor breaks lately, and it's actually pretty dangerous, and I don't think I've seen many people talking about it. I'm assuming that if you've clicked on this video, you're at least a little bit familiar with essential oil scams and the MLMs and all of the stuff surrounding that. This is essentially if you were just like, skip the diffuser, I want that shit sprayed directly into my lungs. This one has it all. An extremely high entry price, a subscription-based model that's also pretty expensive, with their cores running out in days, and on top of that, you're inhaling essential oils directly into your lungs. So we can all agree that smoking is bad for you because of all the stuff that you're putting in your lungs, and that vaping is bad for you because of all the stuff that you're putting in your lungs. So clearly, the solution is to put some more stuff in your lungs. Your body is a pretty fragile thing, and when it comes to your lungs specifically, you do not want to put anything in there that shouldn't be in there, especially when it's not prescribed by a doctor. The people who smoke and vape know this, and most of them want to stop doing it. And this company has reached out to influencers to advertise to their, again, very young, impressionable audience that this is the cure to their addiction. And it's extremely expensive, and a subscription service. They trademarked the good habit as their tagline. I shouldn't need to explain why this is predatory and bad, but even worse, they have some study on their website that isn't peer-reviewed that says it's completely safe. Well, we think it's okay for you to inhale this directly into your lungs, so why don't you give us $80? Hey guys, this is Antonio from the future. I read the whole toxicology report they had done, and it doesn't really inspire any confidence. All that it really says is that the amount of oil that your lungs are exposed to after one draw from a fume is one microliter, which doesn't seem like a lot, right? Let's imagine a person takes a draw of this thing 30 times daily. That would mean that their lungs are exposed to 30 microliters of essential oil every day at maximum. In 33 days of using this thing, or about a month, you will have exposed your lungs to about a milliliter of an essential oil, which, by the way, those aren't regulated, so you have no idea what could be in them other than the extract they claim to be. There is nothing stating whether or not this is safe for you to use, but they still have it listed under their safety section. They claim to have two other third-party studies going on, but they're funding those too, so I wouldn't hold your breath on the results for those. I wouldn't hold your breath, it's straight up diabolical. When you first go onto their website, they advertise a mystery discount for people with stress or anxiety, or people trying to build up a good habit. They're not even just advertising it to people who already smoke and vape and are trying to fix it, they're also advertising it to people with stress. Other recovery products don't do that, Nicorette gum isn't advertising to like college students. This is awful, and I hope that YouTubers stop advertising this to people who are vulnerable and desperate. On top of this, people advertise stress and anxiety solutions like the online therapy company BetterHelp. They've been exposed time and time again already for all the crappy things that they've done, and unfortunately a lot of YouTubers have already contributed to their growth. I know that they can't know everything, but this company was doing some awful things. Allowing unlicensed therapists on their platform, not upholding any standard of quality, and selling customers health data to advertisers. Due to the irresponsibility of all people involved, creators were profiting off of the suffering of others, specifically marginalized groups. Speaking of profiting off of marginalized groups, I'd like to talk about products for the most oppressed group of all. Gamers. 
Gamer supplements, or guplements, if you will, are relatively new. Their whole shtick is improving your energy or focus while gaming, or something like that. I don't know, that's what it says on the websites. I would actually advise that you not use any of them, considering the fact that caffeine, the stimulant that gives you that extra energy and focus, isn't something that you should just take when you're looking for a gaming performance enhancer. Caffeine is a pretty normal thing in everyday society and a lot of people use it, but it's also well known and documented that you shouldn't have it past about 5pm in the day, and advertising it to a group of people that's well known for sitting behind computer screens for hours at a time is a little bit fishy to say the least. I've actually considered using caffeine once or twice considering that I'm in college and all, but caffeine consumption is linked to insomnia, headaches, high blood pressure, and the like. Not only that, but the other active ingredients can be kind of dangerous for younger demographics which are pretty commonly advertised to in the gaming sphere. Experts have warned against specifically this, with nutritionist Chris McMahon saying, Taking high-level stimulants puts a strain on your adrenal system, and this can lead to adrenal fatigue, which can cause their bodies to produce a lot of cortisol and wreak havoc on their hormones as well. And the unfortunate cherry on top of this terrible cake is that caffeine consumption leads to dependency. You start needing it for energy. The younger that you start depending on it, the worse that it gets. And let's be honest, a lot of gamers can be pretty lazy, which means that our risk for heart problems goes up. Caffeine only exacerbates that. This is like one of the exact markets that energy drinks and supplements should not be advertised to, and yet it's become common practice. Also, they use artificial sweeteners, which may or may not be bad for you. I've read a lot of conflicting research on it, so I personally just steer clear of it, but I'm not gonna tell you how to treat it. I'm really not sure. Also, also, the whole waifu cup thing that Gamer Subs does is a little bit odd, but if a picture of an anime woman on a $25 plastic cup does the job for you, I won't won't judge. To be fair, this isn't like the only thing that gets advertised to gamers either. They've also dabbled in spyware with cool colors. Opera GX is a pretty big contender for one of the most interesting rebrands I've ever seen. It went from a pretty bland browser that I thought was gonna die out to the go-to for gamers and all they had to do was slap a cool looking coat of paint on it and then a button that takes you to Twitch very quickly. It claims to have a built-in VPN, but like most free VPNs, it's just just a proxy that they take all of your data from so they're the ones that get to sell it instead of somebody else. But hey, look, it's got fancy lights, and really, that's all a gamer needs. So, by listing out all the things these various companies do to deceive you or advertise to impressionable or vulnerable people, I was trying to get you to understand that even if a product seems harmless, if they're advertising to you through influencers, they could be in some pretty bad stuff. A lot of companies will just rely on advertising a bad product in a really appealing way. Or they'll use creators you like to advertise something that's trying to take advantage of you. Some of these sponsors are things like student loans or bank accounts, which are incredibly big, important decisions that people make. Think twice before you buy something that's been advertised to you by influencers, because chances are, it's not very good. This isn't to say that they can't be good. In fact, I use native deodorant because it's the only deodorant that's never made me itch, and I saw that in a Danny Gonzalez video. Now, they're on store shelves pretty much everywhere, because they proved their worth as a quality product. Displate seems pretty cool, besides the fact that they allow AI slop on their website, and I've saved a non-insignificant amount of money using Honey. These companies and their products can be useful to you, you just need to be aware of what they're advertising. Also, if you're a creator watching this video, Hi. Hi, Markiplier. Hi, Markiplier. I love you, Markiplier. It's not wrong to take sponsorships. Far from it, actually. It's a great way to make a living doing this, and it keeps this as a sustainable career. However, I also think it's really important to remember that your audience likes you and is going to be more likely to buy something you endorse. So as a rule of thumb, I think it's a good idea to only sponsor things that you personally would use. It's a good way to keep your integrity intact, and you can test the quality of the product yourself. Anyways guys, this is my brand new gamer drink called Penguin Sauce. It's made of 100% tar and when you drink it, you die and go to hell. Keep stepping at your net, keep stepping at your keep stepping at your own pace, stepping. Keep stepping
Nacho, Nacho.